um, I've been told that he's, he's been through the storm, come out the other end relatively unscathed. So good luck to the man. I mean, you know, he wrote a great book. My compliments to him, fantastic book. Beliefs are deaths. If you can embrace illusion and know it's illusion, you're all right. I'm not Luke Reinhardt. My name is George Cockroft. Uh, Luke is a, is a wonderful character I created, but uh, uh, I am I am not he. But he's oh, he, part part of him is inside me, of course, sure. George was trying to uh, make his life more lively, to uh, have drama, have drama and challenge in it where there was none. Uh, he grew up in a, a family that was maybe somewhat controlling, who had, that expected him to be a certain person. Um, didn't give him the kind of freedom that uh, maybe he needed as a child to experience a lot of things. And maybe this is a way to, to break those bonds. As a writer, I have a lot of criticisms of the book, but I. I still wouldn't redo it. A character in a, another novel of mine says, uh, day by day we do our very best and consequently make a total mess of things. Well, it's very nice living here. I mean, I, I love uh, living in the country. I haven't been attracted to the city in, in, in some time. But this is not an idol, as you once called it, or an idol, uh, because there are human beings here. And uh, I'm a human being, and we, uh, we bring our happinesses and unhappinesses with us, for better or for worse. I don't know if you want me to uh, say that I am the dice man's wife or that I am Ann Cockroft. I think I am Ann Cockroft. I met her through a dice decision. One of the few dice deci concrete dice decisions I remember, obviously because it had such incredible consequences. I was, uh, I just graduated from Cornell and was uh, working in a state mental hospital out on Long Island, and she was in nurses training at uh, Brooklyn Hospital, and she was interning at the same hospital. And uh, I was driving my car out of the hospital grounds one afternoon and saw two uh, attractive uh, nurses walking along the side of the road and drove past them. And then I stopped at a turnaround a half mile up the road and uh, took out a die and said, uh, if it's odd, I will go back and uh, try to pick up these two girls, and if it's even, I won't. And it came out odd, and I went back, turned around, drove past them the opposite direction and came back and uh, stopped and offered them a ride, and they accepted. And the rest is history. <laughs> since I ended up marrying one of them. Did you let the die choose which one? No. I let my instincts uh, uh, <laughs> and my preferences, uh, uh, which quickly focused uh, on Anne, take, uh, take precedence. What was George like when you met him? George was... extremely interesting. He had a fine sense of humor, a lot of energy. I enjoyed being with him. I think that was uh, the first thing that attracted me to him, is you have a kind of inner rapport. Did you continue dice living after you met each other and married? Did I? Yeah. Did she 
I don't think she knew until I began writing the book and showing her the uh, showing her the uh, uh, the chapters, and then and then I probably told her. He didn't dice when he was dating me. Uh, I didn't know anything about it when we were married. Early in our marriage, I recognized he made lists of things that he wanted to accomplish, list of things he had to do, some of them he didn't want to do. And then he would throw the dice to uh, see, try to get some of these things done, uh, whether it was, I'm going to write 10 pages today, um, I'm going to get the, the lawn mowed, uh, I'm going to get the car fixed, those kinds of things. He would, and occasionally he would do I think the only thing that he ever wrote on a list that I saw that I did not like was, I'm not going to have sex with Ann today. And I took him to task for that. <laughs> I thought, this is a natural thing in a marriage, and you should not make any kind of list, grocery list, if you like, of our married life. Did she ever join you in that? No. She has a very set self, which she's quite happy with. <laughs> Life is a series of choices in which you're always going to be hurting somebody else and helping somebody else and partly hurting yourself and partly helping yourself. Uh, and you can't see clearly the consequences of your actions. Uh, you do something which you think is going to hurt somebody, uh, and it ends up actually freeing them in some way. Uh, so what I think one of the great uses of the dice is to get you to, 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 let, to let go of this need to have the right decision, uh, to have the perfect decision, uh, it teaches you that decisions are sort of arbitrary and ac accidental and, uh, and that you can't always see the consequences of your actions because so much intervenes between your intent uh, and, the, and the ultimate result. George liked feeling detached. I think it uh, made him feel uh, he could have a better grasp of the material of what was going on, more control over the environment, people, whatever, if he was detached from it, that it made it easier to understand. There's a way in which detachment uh, is, is a sickness, uh, and I certainly have, have wanted that and needed that in my life uh, because it disengages you from life. I can understand uh, people want to play with the dice as a game, parlor game, if you please. Um, but as a religion, not for long. <laughs> not if they come to their senses. And maybe you know, they come to their senses with the dice. That's all right. Perhaps my husband did. Maybe that was his way of um, detaching himself from his detachment, from his desire to be detached. From, from feeling. And finally, he felt. There's a, a lot of books of wisdom who will say, if you don't feel, life will make you feel one way or another. The way we conceive of ourselves is the trap that we're in. And therefore, since we carry this trap with us wherever we go, going someplace new is not going to free us. Entering a new relationship is not going to free us. Changing jobs is not going to free us because we're taking along with us our conception of life, our conception of how human beings are. And that's the trap. That's the misery making thing that we carry with us.
And you, reader, good friend and fellow fool, my reader, you, yes, you, my sweet cipher, are the Dice Man.